Before I send everyone off and to their warm homes, I have an announcement. There was a fire at St. Jerome's Home for the Children last night. As you can imagine, there are many children without a place to stay. Considering it is the season for giving, I'm hoping that some of you will consider opening your homes to a child for the holidays, or even until St. Jerome's can be built. They've been calling everyone that has been vetted to foster in the past 10 years, but still are in need. If you can find it in your hearts and have the space, please go down to Silver Creek Elementary School for more information. The children are set up in a temporary shelter in the gymnasium. And who knows, you might even decide to foster or adopt a child. Please rise. Be people of joy. Let joy live in your heart and share the joy of Christ with those you need. See joy in the good with each other. Share joy by seeing the good in each other. Share joy by remembering good times and hoping for good times to come. Share joy by praying for our world. In this Advent season, we need to see, feel, and share joy. As you go out into the wonder of God's creation, share joy, peace, and hope with those you meet. Amen. Go forth in peace and have a great week. Sad. I know. Those poor kids. Yeah, it's a real shame. I'm gonna see if Uncle Vic will take in some. <laughs> kids? Yeah, why not? Maggie, you barely have enough room for your family at that house. There's nothing wrong with where I live, Jesse. That's not what I meant. It's just a, it's you, your mom, Vic, Rosie, Martha. There's a lot of us. I know. Yeah, you share a room with your 14-year-old sister. So? Do you really have enough room for another kid? Aunt Rosie and Uncle Vic adopted Agnes and Merritt after we moved in with them. We've always found room, especially for those in need. You and your dad should take some in. Some? <laughs> no, no way. Why not? I don't like kids, Maggie. You like Martha? That's different, she's like my little sister. So, she's still a kid and a teenager, no less. Yeah, but I've known her since she was born. It doesn't matter. You'd be doing something good and for Christmas. Which also happens to be my birthday. Even more of a reason to take some kids in. You have plenty of room. So? So? Open your home to at least one child without a family. Maggie, please don't guilt trip me. <laughs> I'm not guilting you. I have two bedrooms. That's enough room to take in siblings. Look, I'm an only child. So? So I'm not the biggest fan of sharing. I don't mean you getting siblings. I mean taking in siblings from foster care so that they don't have to be separated. Kids aren't going to want to live with dad and me. You're being ridiculous. At least think about it. OK. I'll think about it. And I'll talk to your dad. You're impossible. that don't have the spots. Like, like, That's true. Like dog hey, Lydia. Dog <laughs> Jimmy. Hey. Who are these two? This is Josie. And this is Tim. And they were living at St. Jerome's until last night. 
There was a really big fire. We heard about it at church this morning. I'm so sorry. It must have been really scary. It was. I wasn't scared. Is that right? <laughs> well, I'm sure you're very brave, Tim. No, he wasn't. I saw him crying. Was not. Were too. Not uh Smoke got in my eyes. Hey, now, no arguing. <laughs> Can we join you for breakfast? Oh, uh, we just finished. Uh, we're just waiting on our bill now. Uh, I'll take care of it. Really? You don't have to do that. It's the least I can do. It's really nice of you guys to take these kids out to breakfast. So my treat. <laughs> They're doing more than that. We live with them now. Really? Sort of. It's not for good. I live upstairs with Jake and Mr. and Mrs. Potter. John moved into the other bedroom in the basement with me. Yeah, I have a boy's room, but that's okay. I don't mind. It's nice having my own room for a change, even if it's just for Christmas. <laughs> and what about you, Tim? Are you staying with Jimmy? I got my own room, too. He's staying in the guest room. <laughs> it's blue. That's my favorite color. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> All right, so what about you, Tim? What about us? Are you taking anyone in? There are still so many kids that need somewhere to stay. I want to. I need to talk to my family. I don't know if we have enough space. What about you, Jesse? Yeah, isn't it just you and your dad in the big house? Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. I mean... Here you go. Please. Sorry for the wait. I'll take that, Ladine. Uh, do you two need a table? <laughs> yes, please. Follow me. Nice meeting you kids. <laughs> Thanks for breakfast. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. I'll be right over, Jesse. Is he okay? I am not sure. <laughs> uh, if you guys need anything, just let me know, okay? My name is Maggie, and that's Jesse over there. Is he your boyfriend? Yes, he is. Ooh. Apparently, I'm taking care of three kids now. <laughs> See you guys later. of the potters and the Capernaums. Yeah. Yeah, it is. You have way more room in your house than they do, you know. Yeah, so? So maybe you could take a couple kids in. Maggie, I like things the way that they are. Maybe you should do something unpredictable. What's wrong with predictable? It's okay to change things up every once in a while, Jess. It... Take breakfast, for instance. You always get the cinnamon bun pancakes. I like the cinnamon bun pancakes. You can choose something else and still be happy with it. it. It's not like getting something different is gonna be a huge inconvenience for you, especially when your friends are trying something new and your girlfriend is supporting you. I suddenly feel like we're not talking about pancakes. Just, I, I don't mean to nag. So don't. But this is really important to me. You know how I feel about kids. And you know how I feel, Maggie. I'm not ready for kids. I don't know if I ever will be. And even then, I only want one. That's because you've never been around children before. Sure, I have. No, you haven't. Like you said, you're an only child. You've never had that experience. It, maybe taking a couple kids in for Christmas would be a good way to decide if you want children of your own. If I say I'll think about it, can we at least move on, please? Yes. I'll think about it. Will you really? Yes, I will think about it. Promise? I promise. Thank you. Dad, I'm home. I'm in the kitchen. Hey, Dad. Hey, Jesse. You want some coffee? Uh, no thanks. Maggie and I just had brunch. Oh, I was wondering what took you so long. Oh, sorry. I should have called. <laughs> That's all right. I got some stuff done. Now, you heard about St. Jerome. Yeah, Pastor Luke was talking about it. It's really sad. It is. It is. Oh, it and is. we saw Lydia and Jimmy. I, I think they're taking in a couple of the kids. You know, it's, it's, it's funny that you should mention that. Don't tell me you're on the kid kick, too. Well, uh, I don't want to take in any of the kids, Dad. Come on. Jess, 
We need this like we need matching root canals, Dad. Jesse! What? <laughs> Meet Abigail and David. They'll be staying with us for a while. Hey, kids! <laughs> Welcome! Told you no one wanted us. Hey, can I have more milk, please? Abigail, can I come in? It's your house. You can do whatever you want. It's not very nice. In this house, we're respectful to one another. I might not be your dad, but I am your guardian for the time being. I need you to show respect. Can you do that? I guess. So right now, this is your room, and I respect your space, and I'm not going to come inside unless you allow it. Really? Yes, really. So, may I come in? Yeah. So, that's Jesse. I noticed. Sorry. It's all right. Hey, listen, we don't know how long we're gonna be here, and we're just starting to learn about each other. I don't think Jesse wants us here. Oh, he's just surprised is all. He'll come around. Back him in. You give him a chance. He's really not a bad guy. Be nice to her. She's been through a lot. Hmm? So may I come in? Yeah, sure. So, uh, Abigail. That's me. Can I call you Abby? No. Only my brother calls me Abby. Okay. Abigail it is. <laughs> is Jesse short for something? Uh, no. Just Jesse. <laughs> Listen, I didn't mean what I said down there. Sure you did. You just got caught. Hey, I'm trying but to... But it's true. If David and I weren't there, you still would have said those things. I guess. And you meant it. <laughs> How old are you, like 12? 14. I'll be 15 in February. Are you sure you're not turning 40? <laughs> what? Nothing, uh, never mind. Um, you know, I really think we got off on the wrong foot. <laughs> you can say that again. Listen, I'm really trying here, Abigail, all right? Look, I'm really sorry for what I said, and I'm sorry that you heard me. So you're sorry that you got caught. Right. You and David are welcome here for Christmas. Really? Yes. My girlfriend Maggie actually wants to take in some kids too, and she doesn't even have room in her house. Does she have a big family? Yep. Lucky. Yeah, I guess she is. I wouldn't know, I'm an only child. Your dad told me your mom died in March. She did. Mine did too. And my dad. I'm sorry to hear that. I was 10. David was 7. No one wants to take in two foster kids, so... That can't be true. It is. Even people who knew our parents didn't take us. We bounced from house to house and till we landed in St. Jerome's and now that's gone too. Don't you have any family? My parents were only children. What about your grandparents? Green Rock Cemetery. I just keep putting my foot in my mouth, don't I? <laughs> Look, you don't want us here. Uh, I get it. I'm sure we can find somewhere else to go. No, 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 no. You're, you're very, very welcome here. Really? Absolutely. Okay, well... I promise we'll stay out of your way, and we won't touch your stuff. We'll probably will eat your food, though. Uh, 
You're not gonna be in my way. I, I was being a real jerk. All right, I'm sorry. It's fine. Good. Come on. Hey, everything okay? Yeah, I think so. Abigail? Yeah, we're good. Can we go outside? Hey, but it's freezing out. I want to blow a snow fort. You don't even have a coat warm enough to play in the snow. It's not that cold. It's like 20 degrees. You're not my mom. Okay, okay. <laughs> Why don't you guys go upstairs and unpack first, and we'll see what you have. Oh, man. I'll take you outside to build a snow fort. You will? You will. You will? Don't be so surprised. Uh, John, Jimmy, and I used to build the best snow forts whenever it snowed. I've never built one before. Ever. Really? Yeah, they wouldn't let us outside long enough at St. Jerome's. I think the closest we got to building a snowman was like two big snowballs. <laughs> yeah, and then they would make us go inside so we didn't get sick. Aw, that's too bad. Well, today's your lucky day, kid. I'm gonna show you how to build the best snow fort. Awesome! <laughs> Uh, just go put your clothes away and we can go outside. I don't want to go outside. Well, maybe you'd like to go shopping for some warmer clothes? Shopping? See, I don't know if you noticed, but I don't have any money. Don't worry about that. Seriously? Yeah. Consider it a peace offering. Deal. Come on. Come on, Abby. Shh. What are you doing? They have to be calling Miss Tubbins for money for us. Look at this house. They don't need us for money. Why else would they take us in, David? Double the kids, double the money from the state. That's not nice. Yeah, well, it's true. You have to stop trusting people so fast. Not everyone's nice. Not everyone's mean. Just because the Osbournes took us in for money doesn't mean that everyone else will. <sighs> well, you can't be too careful. Just go upstairs. I'm gonna listen for a minute. Don't get in trouble. I won't, unless I get caught. Or you tell on me. I'm not telling. Then go put your clothes away. Mm. I know, I know, okay? I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize to me. I already apologized to Abigail. And David? I think building a snow fort outside with them is an apology enough. Okay, okay. I'll have a heart to heart with him too. It was not a very good introduction, Jesse. Yeah, I know. You know, your mom and I, we thought about adopting before you were born. You did? Yeah, well, we didn't think we could conceive naturally. Hey, why do you think you were an only child? I mean, we wanted to have more than one kid. Really? Yeah. I mean, we didn't want you to think that you weren't good enough for us, but uh, after you graduated college, we signed up to be foster parents. What? I had no idea. Yeah, well, it's because soon thereafter, your mom was diagnosed, and we put ourselves on an active status until she went into remission. But she never did. Now, Jesse. Your mom would have been first in line to help these kids out. She would have taken them all in if she could, especially at Christmas. You're not seriously pulling out the mom card, are you, Dad? It's all true, Jesse. These kids, they're staying. It's what your mom would have wanted. This just might be the last Christmas gift we can give her. David, how's it going? Okay, I guess. I mean, I don't really have any clothes that are warm enough. Don't you have any snow pants? Snow pants? 
What are those? Pants that go over your clothes so you don't get wet. So like a wetsuit? <laughs> Kinda, only for snow. And they're a lot thicker and you gotta wear your clothes underneath them. So not like a wetsuit at all? I mean, they both keep you from getting cold. More like a dry suit. <laughs> Haven't you ever been skiing? No. Snowboarding? No. I mean, I've seen it on television now. What about sledding? Yeah, I've been sledding a couple of times. Well, uh, what did you wear? Mm, just my sweatpants. Didn't you get all wet and cold? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Then Miss Tubbins told us to go inside. <sighs> I guess you didn't really have that much fun at St. Jerome's. I mean, it was okay. I liked living at home a lot better with my parents. I don't know. I just couldn't remember it that much. You were pretty young when they died, huh? Yeah. I mean, I still kind of remember what they look like. And I always carry this around, so I always remember. I'll tell you what. Hey, why don't we put this right here so that they can see your whole room? So this is really all mine? The room? Yeah. Absolutely. It's all yours, man. So I get this while I'm here, right? Right. Hey, as long as you're here, this place is David's den. If it's done. I like that. Tell you what, uh, why don't we go get your sister and we can head to the shops at Eastwind. Foster kids aren't allowed there. Of course they are. <laughs> really? For what? Uh, to go shopping. What about thrift shop? What do you mean? I mean, the last family that we lived with told us that foster kids can only go to the thrift shop and only when they really need to. Well, that's terrible, and that's a lie. It is? Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Come on, let's go get your sister. Hey, come on, let's go. Where are we going? We're going to the shops at Eastwood. Why? We're gonna go shopping. I thought foster kids weren't allowed to go there. Yeah, well, uh, now they are. Are you sure? Absolutely. We don't have any money. That's okay. I do. I can't really pay you back till I'm like 40. I don't need you to pay me back. Consider it an early Christmas present. Awesome. Christmas isn't for another two weeks. Oh, uh, which reminds me, we need to get you guys some Christmas clothes for church. You're really gonna let us stay until Christmas? You can stay as long as you need to. So like, until St. Jerome's gets rebuilt, right? Yeah, exactly. If you say so. I do, so come on. I gotta go get changed first. Don't ruin this, Abby. I mean, we have a chance of getting a nice Christmas for once. Why? Everything's just gonna disappear when we go back to the orphanage. It's not an orphanage, it's just a home for kids. Potato, potato. Come on, let's go, Abby. Hey, I'm taking the kids to the mall, Dad. Oh, that's really a change of attitude. Well, if you can't beat them, join them. Maybe you should take Maggie with you. Why? You're really going to go clothes shopping for a 14-year-old girl. Good point. <laughs> See ya. Hi, Jesse. Miss me already? You have no idea. What's up? Well, my dad decided to take in a couple of kids from St. Jerome's. Jesse, that's so great. Yeah, great. Unfortunately, they lost all of their belongings in the fire. Oh, that's terrible. Those poor kids. Yeah. So, I'm gonna take them shopping. 
And you want me to come with you? Yes, please. Uh, Martha can come too. Martha? Why? Well, we have a brother and a sister here. David is 10 and Abigail's 14, same age as Martha. Ah, uh, well, say no more. I'm sure Martha would love to come. Great, thank you. Do you want us to meet you there? Uh, yeah, yeah. I guess I should get to know the kids a little bit. Okay, when? Half hour? Uh, park in the south parking lot and I'll find you. Sounds good. Great, thanks Maggie. See you in a few. Bye. I would love to go where? The shops at East Wind. With who? It's shopping, Martha. You love shopping. Yeah, but with who? Jesse took in two foster kids. The girl, Abigail, is your age. Does she go to my school? I don't know. I didn't ask. Well, if she lives with Jesse, she has to, right? I suppose. Why don't you ask her yourself? I will. Get your coat. We're leaving. So, what are we allowed to get? Uh, well, what do you want? Is that a trick question? Of course not. <laughs> I wrote a Christmas list. I don't know why you even bother. It's not like we're getting Christmas presents again. Hey, now. What? It's true. We can get Christmas presents. The ones for me don't count. Well, Santa's just been having a hard time trying to find us, that's all. Santa Claus isn't- Isn't even... aware that the fire at St. Jerome's happened yet. I'm sure he heard about it and uh, he'll find you at our house this year. You think so? Yeah, sure. Abby? Whatever. So, uh, what do you want to get today, buddy? Um, we can get anything, right? Absolutely. So I was thinking maybe I can get a television for my room. And then maybe I can get a gaming console and a capture card. Maybe whoa, 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 buddy. What's the matter, Jesse? You said we could get anything. Clothes. <laughs> I meant clothes, shoes, stuff like that. Oh. But you can put that stuff on your Christmas list, okay? Okay. I can't believe I have to go clothes shopping with my little brother and some random guy. First of all, I'm not just some random guy. And second of all, you don't have to go shopping with us. I don't. No, my girlfriend and her sister are coming too. Yay, more people to feel sorry for us. Martha happens to be 14, so I thought you might like to meet a friend. What's the point? I'm not sticking around, am I? Okay, you have two options, Abigail. Either come shopping with David and I, or Maggie and Martha. Or, I mean, I can always have my dad pick you up some clothes. Maggie and Martha. Yeah, that's what I thought. <sighs> All right.
think? I think they're kids. Yeah, but they're not bad kids. I never said that. They're kids. <laughs> so you, uh, you going out tonight? Uh, no. John is moving in with Lydia so that Josie can take his room, so they're straightening everything up. Mm -hmm. who's, who's Josie? Uh, the Potters took in a foster kid. Oh, nice. Yeah. And Jimmy's sister is coming in town to meet Tim. Tim. The foster kids the Capernaums took in. Jimmy and Timmy? <laughs> yeah. Cute. <laughs> I guess. And what about Maggie? Oh, she's spending some time with Martha. They're going through their new clothes. So, it's just you and me tonight. Uh, yep. <laughs> and the kids, of course. Yep. You know, Jesse, I, I, I want to know why. Why do you have such a problem with them staying here? I don't have a problem, okay? It just surprised me to see him. That's all. You know, listen, why don't, why don't you... Why don't you just take the rest of the month off? Rest of the month? Dad, I can't. Sure you can. Well, who's gonna help you out? It's slow. I don't need any help. And if I do, I'll call you. But Dad, No I buts, no buts. Listen, Lydia is handling the bookkeeping and the paperwork. You need time off. Oh, I don't. Yes, you do. And these kids, they need someone to be here for them. Why don't I work and you stay here with the kids? <laughs> hey, I'm too old for little kids. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Hey, are you, uh, are you actually going to bed? Yeah, why not? It's barely 10 o'clock. You never go to bed before 10. Something tells me I'm going to need my sleep. Cool. Good night. Good night. I'm awake. Come on. Can you at least try to be more nice? I am nice. Yeah, but it's like us now. We don't have a mom anymore. It's not a foster kid. He has a family. Yeah, but they're letting us be part of it. For now. So what if it's just for now? Let's enjoy it. Fine. But only for you. Thanks. No! Great! You're up! Can we go play in the snow? Uh-huh. Everybody's going to Tim's house. Can we go? Uh, who's Tim? Tim, my friend from St. Jerome's. He's at Jimmy's house. Can we go? To Jimmy's house? Yeah! All the kids from Hope are going. He said he has the best sledding slope ever. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> so, can we go? Just let me get some coffee first. And then can we go? Yeah, I guess. Awesome! <sighs> Come on, Jesse! Yep, I got... <sighs> Do you always sleep this late? <laughs> no. I usually work. So why aren't you working now? Because I'm spending time with you guys. <laughs> Did your dad make you? What? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, sure. Can we go now? I just woke up. I'm not even dressed, buddy. But all the kids are gonna get there before us. There's gonna be no more snow. As soon as I finish my coffee, we'll go, okay? Can you finish your coffee and get ready at the same time? I prefer not to. <laughs> it's okay, David. Grown-ups take a lot longer than us to get ready in the morning. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, nothing. Just, you're not young like us. You take longer to get your 
energy. Go get your coat on. What? Yeah, go get your coat on. I'll be ready in five minutes. I don't know if that's such a good idea. Okay. How old do you think I am? I don't know, 40? 40? No way, Abby. Thank you. At least 45. Go get in the car. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Let's go. 45, huh? Okay, ready? Ready! Okay, uh, put on your seatbelts. Okay. Hey, come on! What? Hey, Abby. Hey, Rachel. What took you so long? Someone slept in late. Grown ups. Come on, let's go. Something wrong? I just didn't think there were going to be this many kids. <laughs> Why not? I don't know. How many kids are at St. Jerome's, anyways? I don't know. About a hundred, I think. A hundred? Where'd they all go? Different places. People like your dad took them in, at least until St. Jerome's was rebuilt. But a hundred of you live there. Yeah, there's a lot of kids like me out there. Kids like you, what does that mean? Foster kids. Never really thought about it. Most people don't. There's almost half a million kids in the system in the United States. Wow. How do you know all this stuff? The internet. I wanted to see our chances of getting out. You make it sound like you're in prison. We're not, but we're probably going to be there till I'm 18. I mean, people only want to adopt babies. That can't be true. Well, the ones who want to adopt older don't want to, and I'm not going anywhere without my brother. Let's go. Stop throwing snowballs at me. I didn't expect to see you here. Why not? You don't really seem into the whole kids scene, Jess. What, really? You don't wanna have kids one day? I never said that. He just doesn't like them very much. Maggie, come on. And what is so bad about kids? Nothing. All I said is that there's a lot of them, okay? Okay then, come sledding. Huh? Sledding, it's a blast. It is, Jesse, let's play in the snow. I don't know. It's so much fun. You want to like weird the kids again. At least come out on one ride with me. Yeah, you don't want to be called a fuddy-duddy. A fuddy-duddy? You know the kids this morning thought that I was 45? <laughs> <laughs> it is not funny. <laughs> okay, old man. Yeah, maybe Mrs. Capernaum can put on some hot tea and face your rocker towards the window while you watch all the fun we're having. All right, let's go. Woo! Let's go.
once before Just like a thousand times to come I come to you, Lord You are my light You save my soul You'll be my guide When I come to you Like I've done A thousand times before Kids had fun. Yeah, they did. Remember when we used to go sledding down this hill? Oh, must have been the best. Yeah, it was. I bet you were the most popular guy in school, Jimmy. You can say that. <laughs> At least in the winter he was. Man, I just don't know how these kids got all this energy. I'm ready for it, Nat. Hey, don't let them hear you say that. They're brutal. You're telling me I had to beg my dad to give me off just so I could prove to Josie I could play in the snow. Please, my dad told me to take off so that I could spend some time with the kids. Well, that's really sweet. Think he'll give me off too? No chance. <laughs> uh, you guys uh, want to go to Momo's tonight? I, I don't know, man. I'm still tired. Yeah, I'm in. I'm not going to let some kids stop me from having a social life. That's the spirit, Jesse. I could stick around and help you clean up so you can come out tonight. For real? Yeah, it's the least I can do. I'll help out too. Nope, that's okay, we have got it. Why don't you drive Josie home, and then Jimmy can take me? Yeah, I can. Uh, sure, okay, uh. Josie, let's go. Uh, eight o'clock? Works for me. I'll ask my dad to watch the kids. Yeah, me too. Oh, don't forget to ask your parents to watch Josie tonight. Lydia. She lives in my old room. We can't even hear her from the apartment. Maybe Aunt May and Uncle Z have the plans. <laughs> my parents never go out. See you guys at eight. All right, see ya. You two sure you don't need any help? Yeah, we got it. Yeah, we do. See you later, Jesse. See ya. David, Abigail, let's go! Man, I sound like my dad. <laughs> Come on, get in the car. <laughs> Maggie. 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 I lost my spork. <sighs> Go home. Huh? You and your friends have been sleeping for the past hour. We closed 45 minutes ago. I'm so sorry, Uncle Vic. I've never seen anyone literally fall asleep on their feet. It was an active day with the kids. Wake your friends up and head out. This is a restaurant, not a hotel. I'll close up. See you at home. See you at home. <sighs> wakey, wakey. Hey, guys, it's time to go home. Come on, John, Jesse, Lydia, Jimmy, come on. <clears throat> I fell asleep? We all did. Oh, what time is it? It's a little after nine. What? That's all? Feels like it's after midnight. Nope. Uncle Vic just closed the doors and woke me up. Looks like it was a slow night. I'll tell you one thing. I'm not ready for kids. <laughs> it was a fun day, though. Yeah, too much fun. My knee's killing me. Are you working tomorrow morning? Maggie, I work every morning, so... True. Lydia's working, too. Yeah, so is Jimmy. Oh, I guess I'm the lucky one. You're not working? Your old man uh, fire you or something? Nope. Forced vacation. <sighs> Mr. McNeil wants Jesse to spend time with the foster kids. You should plan a Christmas party at your house for them. That's a great idea. Oh, uh, I don't know. I'll help you. It'll be fun. For all the kids? Well, I mean, the ones in Hope, at least. You have plenty of space, Jesse. And I could have my dad donate, you know, desserts from uh, the coffee potter. That's a good idea. I'll, I'll bring food from here. Oh, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. <laughs> Be a, something else going on, McNeil? Don't look at me. I think it's a great idea. Just do it, Jesse. Is she awake? 
Fine. I'll talk to my dad. Great. But you're going to help me. You all are going to help me. Fine by me. I'm okay with that as long as it's after I get a full night's sleep. <laughs> Come on, Lydia. Let's go. Uh, I'll walk you to your car, Maggie. Thanks. I'll grab my coat. <sighs> yep. Let's go. We gotta go. Come on, Sleeping Beauty. Where's Lydia? Uh, I'm right here. <laughs> oh. Sorry. That's okay. We all fell asleep. You did? Yeah. I can tell you all about it tomorrow morning. Breakfast? Okay. Sure. <laughs> what? Don't even think about it. Let's go. I think that's a wonderful idea. I knew you would. When do you want to do it? I don't know. I mean, Christmas is Saturday. There's not that much time to plan it. Well, there's plenty of time with everybody offering to help. I only talked to John, Jimmy, Maggie, and Lydia. Well, and if they're all going to help, I'm sure other people will too. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I will find out one of the families in Hope took in foster kids. We'll invite them too. Invite them where? Abigail, you're up early. I heard voices. What's going on? Well, Jesse is going to host a Christmas party for you, here. Really? Yeah. Why not? Well, who's coming? Hey, maybe Abigail wants to help you plan everything. I'll see you two tonight. Uh, so... Uh, do you want some breakfast? Um, I'll wait for David to get up. Thanks. You guys do everything together, right? Yeah. Sometimes the night he even sleeps in my room. We had to hide it at St. Jerome's. Really? Why? Boys and girls sleep in different areas. Even if you're brother and sister? Yeah. Boys were in one place, girls in another. Brothers got to stick with brothers, sisters with sisters, but me and David were separated. It's awful. Mm, it's not as bad as it sounds. St. Jerome took really good care of us. There was just a lot of rules to follow to maintain structure, whatever that means. I can't believe you were in the same building and couldn't see each other. Oh no, we could see each other. Meals, free time, weekends. Still, it must be hard. You get used to it. Shouldn't have to. Just four more years, then I can get out and bring him with me. So, uh... About the Christmas party. Oh, you don't have to do that for us. I'm sure it was your dad's idea. Actually, it wasn't. It was mine. <laughs> really? You want to throw a Christmas party for us? Hey, I used to have some pretty awesome Christmas parties here when I was your age. <laughs> Wait, really? Don't act so surprised. The 20th of December every year, right up until I graduated high school. Well, what happened after high school? Well, I... Moved away and went to college. What happened when you came back? To be honest, Abigail, I haven't been back long enough to plan a Christmas party since. I came back in January when my mom got sick uh, with cancer. She died in March. Right. I remember. You seem to remember a lot of things. I do. My mom said it was a gift. I think it'll be nice to plan a Christmas party. Maybe we can do some things that our moms would have liked to do. Yeah, I like that. All right. So, uh, decorations. One last announcement before heading out for the week. Joe and Jesse McNeil will be hosting a Christmas party for the kids from St. Jerome's this Monday. Tomorrow, December 23rd, starting at 6 p.m. A buffet dinner will be provided by Momo's and desserts will be provided by the coffee potter. If you would like to attend or even just help out, please reach out to Joe McNeil at North Fork Auto Body. On a personal note, I would like to thank the people of this parish for opening their homes to the kids from St. Jerome's. 27 children are staying in hope for the holidays. Pastor Luke. Yes, Mr. Salem. 
I'd like to testify if you don't mind. Please do. Now, my wife and I were here last week and we heard what you said about the fire at St. Jerome's. Now, we've never been able to have kids of our own. I mean, we even tried adopting infants from other countries because we just didn't think it was possible to do that here in the United States. I mean, we got a month away from bringing our baby girl home and it got canceled on us. We had everything already set up. The rooms, everything. We just didn't have the heart to take it apart. So we closed the door. But last week, when you were talking about St. Jerome's, we, we knew we had to rush right on down there and fill out those forms. We did. We were matched up with little Samantha. And praise the Lord, we filled out the official adoption application. God is good. See, there are a lot of new beginnings for the kids at St. Jerome's. Babies always get adopted first. Congratulations to Mr. and Mrs. Salem. Let's be sure to keep them all in our prayers. Please rise. Be people of love. Let love live in your heart and share the love of Christ with all you need. Share love by loving those you see regularly. Start by loving your community. Share love by loving those you do not know. How do your actions impact the rest of God's creation? Share love by praying for our world. In this Advent season, we need to see, feel, and share love. As you go out into the wonder of God's creations, share love, joy, hope, and peace with all you meet. Amen. Amen. Go forth in peace and have a great week. Hi. What are you doing here, Lucy? Is that any way to greet me? I thought you were still in Los Angeles. We came home for Christmas. I didn't think you considered Hope your home anymore. Well, as long as my parents live here, I do. Aren't you happy to see me? Not really. Lucy, the last time I saw you, you were trying to get me to move to the West Coast with you. There's still time. No. No, there, there isn't. I'm with Maggie now. Oh. <laughs> I saw you and her with those kids. You guys play in house? Lucy, go home. I don't want you here. So, uh... Which one's your mom? I want to pay my respects. Lucy, come on. What? She loved us when we were together. Yeah, that was a long time ago. And she didn't like you after we broke up. As a matter of fact, she warned me not to ever get back together with you again. Oh, well, looks like I'm here and she's not, so. Guess I won. Goodbye, Lucy. Sweet. Aren't you gonna wish me a Merry Christmas? Merry Christmas. Now, can you please leave? Sure, maybe I'll swing by your Christmas party. I'm sorry, but it's only for the families that are fostering kids for St. Jerome, so. My mom took in a kid, Jesse. <laughs> Don't look so surprised. She's the mayor of hope. No, she has to lead by example and all that jazz. Yeah, I feel sorry for that kid. Don't, he's doing great. Um, maybe I'll bring him over. See you later. Hey, 
Hey, where have you been? I just needed to blow off some steam. Is everything okay? Hey, Jesse, where have you been? I was just walking home, buddy. <laughs> then I stopped by to see Mom at the cemetery. Are you gonna cancel the Christmas party? Of course not. Okay, you just seem like you didn't want to have it anymore after church. No, I do. I definitely do. Well, that's good. A lot of kids are looking forward to it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Right, Papa Joe? Papa Joe? Uh, David came up with the name. I told him he could call me that. <laughs> yeah, I'll stick with Mr. McNeil, assuming as this isn't a permanent home. Abby, stop being so mean. So is, uh, is everything okay? Yeah, yeah. We'll talk later, uh, when little ears can't hear us. <laughs> Okie dokie. Abby, go away. No. Oh. What do you want? You really need to start being nice to Jesse and Papa Joe. What's the point? And I wish you wouldn't call him Papa Joe. Why not? Because... He's not our papa. He's not our dad or a grandpa. He's just like everyone else. And he's gonna give us back to St. Jerome's once it's rebuilt. So what? At least we can have a nice Christmas now. David, I'm sick of being a foster kid. I want a home. So do I. But you're my home, Abby. And you're kind of making it hard to have fun here. I'm sorry. I'll go apologize. Promise? I promise. I'll be right back. I can't believe how many foster kids there are. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I told you, your mom and I, we were gonna take in a foster kid, then she got sick, and we thought, you know, it's just too much responsibility to take in a child who's already been through so much, you know? Yeah. So is that, that's what's on your mind? Sort of. I'm all ears. I ran into Lucy after church. Lucy Horton? What is she doing back so soon? She was just here in uh, uh, September. That's what I said. She apparently is home for the holidays. Ugh. Sounds like she's got something up her sleeve. <sighs> Maybe. Her mom took in a kid from St. Jerome's. No, no way. Yeah, a boy. <gasps> that poor, poor child. That's what I said. <laughs> she uh, suggested that they're coming to the Christmas party here. No, no. I really don't want her to hear that. <sighs> I don't blame you, she's bad news. You know, to be truthful, I, I don't want her here either. So what should I do? Should I say something to her? I, I wouldn't. But what about the boy? I know. He deserves to be here, she doesn't. Yeah. Why should he miss out? Because she's such a terrible person. I and mean, you have given her plenty of chances, son. I know, I know I have. I... She's gonna ruin everything, Dad. I really don't want her around, Dad. I feel your pain, but you you have to do what's right. Which is? I don't know. I wish she would just leave and never come back. So do I, son. So do I. Oh? What happened? I'm leaving, David. Why, Abby? Why are you crying? I overheard Mr. McNeil and Jesse talking about me. What'd they say? They said how they wish I wasn't around. And you belong here. I mean, at least you have a chance for a family. But you're my family, Abby. No one wants me! Don't you get it? Of course you don't. I always told you to be nice. Yeah, well, it's too late now. I'm leaving. What do you mean? Tonight, after everyone goes to sleep, I'm leaving. I'm running away. I'll come back when I'm 18 for you. No way! I'm coming with you. You can't. You're too little. I'm 10, I'm not little. Well, you're too little for me to take care of and you take, can't take care of yourself. Neither can you. Yes, I can. If you don't bring me with you, I'm telling. You better not. I will. <sighs> Fine. I'll come get you after they go to sleep. No, I'm sleeping in your bed. You don't trust me to wake you up? No, actually. You're not leaving me here. I need you, Abby.
I can't stop thinking about what these kids are gonna go back to. What do you mean? I just had more privileges growing up. I took a lot for granted. Hey, we were lucky to even have a family. Exactly. Dad, what would you think about fostering them? Abigail and David? Yeah, I mean, I know it would be a full-time job, but it's not like we can't handle it. I mean, they're old enough, you know? Are you sure? Yeah, I think so. Son, you can't think so about something like this, son. I mean, we would be changing their lives. There are no take-backs. Once we agree to foster them, they are either leaving because they want to, or because they found a permanent family. Well, what about us? What about us what? Why can't we be their permanent family? A uh, Mr. Salem down at the church, they just put in an adoption application for the baby they're fostering. I, I don't know. I, they, I think there are a lot of steps. And I think we should talk to the kids first. Yeah, I guess. You know, this might be a good conversation for Christmas morning. Uh, hey, buddy. Hey. Where's Abigail? She's in her room. She doesn't feel well. Oh, no. Uh, should I go check on her? No, she said she wanted to take a nap. Oh, okay. Well, here, let me uh, help you finish these cards. Oh, no thanks. I'm, this is actually going to be my last one. Oh, you know, tomorrow I'm going to take all of these to Miss Tubbins on my way to work. Thanks, Mr. McNeil. Mr. McNeil? What happened to, uh, Papa Joe? Can I go to my room now? You don't have to ask me that. Hey, are you feeling all right? Thanks. That was weird. Yeah, I wonder what's going on. No idea. Abby, I'm scared. Don't be. But I am. It's not easy to turn off being scared. I know. Everything's gonna be okay. Promise? I promise. Hey, there's a farm up the road. They have a barn with horses. Horses? Really? Yeah. I'm sure we can stay there tonight and be warm. How far away is it? I don't know. We passed it on the way to church. I saw the horses in the fields. I know what you're talking about. Can I pet the horses? Sure. As long as you don't make any noise. I won't. Thanks for coming over early to help out. No problem. Martha will be over after school. Are David and Abigail in school yet? No, not yet. They're giving the foster kids a break until January 3rd. Uh, Dad actually goes next week to uh, register them. Can't you do it? 
No, I'm not their official guardian. Ah. Then where are they? Upstairs sleeping. Uh, they weren't feeling too well last night. Oh no. I hope they're not sick for the party. They'll be fine. I'll go check on them. Okay, they're upstairs in Abigail's room. David wanted to sleep with her last night. Oh, poor kid. Still dealing with anxiety from the fire, I bet. Oh, I'm sure. Be right back. Oh, hey, Maggie? Yeah? What would you say if I asked my dad to foster the kids on a permanent basis? I'd say I told you so. Abigail? Abigail? David? Are you okay? They're still sleeping. Let them go a little bit longer. and I'm sure they're gonna have a late night and they won't wanna crash. <laughs> so. Good idea. Maybe they'll sleep it off. I hope so. Good morning, Miss Shiloh. Pretty cold night last night. I like those heaters. It's a lot warmer in here than it is in my own garage. <laughs> Someone's in here. Hey, Mr. Jericho. We look like we're gonna get some more snow today. So you guys better stay inside. I'll open the pens for you. But don't you go too far. I don't want to pull you back out of those snow drifts. Oh, that was a close one. Yeah. Did you hear him knock? He said it's going to snow the rest of the day. Yeah, well, we better stay here until the weather gets better. Yeah, I totally bad. There's a bathroom outside. Didn't you see? No. I saw a bathroom in an office when you came in. Mm, I guess I was too tired. Okay, go now before he gets back. Hey, John, didn't expect to see you so early. Uh, yeah, the old man insisted I come over and help you set everything up. Well, that's great because Maggie and I could really use your help, man. Looks like it. You know you got like uh, 70 people coming here, right? That many? Yeah, that many. This party's the talk of the town, all right? You know, all the foster families are coming. They even hung up flyers at the coffee potter. I guess I didn't realize that many people were coming. I better go wake up the kids so they can help us out. <laughs> They're still sleeping? Oh, yeah, yeah. But I bet they didn't even sleep. I mean, I remember how I was at that age. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that's because you could sleep through a parade marching through your bedroom. Okay, so what? In my case, that's a good talent to have. <laughs> I'm gonna go wake the kids up. Maggie's in the kitchen. All right. David and Abigail, you guys awake? Can I come in, guys? Abigail, I'm coming in. David, Abigail, it's getting late. Time to get up. Come on, guys. Let's Oh, no. 
Maggie! North Fork Auto Body, this is Lydia. How can I help you? Lydia, it's Jesse. Jesse? What's wrong? <laughs> it's the, the kids are missing. What? Which kids? Abigail and, and David. I, do you know where my dad is? Um, he's with the customer. Let me go get him. There's there's no time. Russ and Maggie are out looking for them, and John's on the phone with the police. Uh, can you just tell my dad to come home and wait here in case they come back? Okay, and where are you going? Out to find them, too. I'm on my way. Thanks. There's nothing the cops can do unless they've only been gone for 24 hours, man. But they're kids. I know, I know. Well, hey, can you stay here until my dad and Lydia come back? Yeah. Why? Right, where are you going? I'm going to find David and Abigail. If you teach a bird to sing, she gonna learn to fly. If you let her sing, she gonna fly. If you let her sing, she gonna fly away. If you teach bird to sing, she gon' learn to fly If you let her sing, she gonna fly If you let her sing, she gonna fly away I really appreciate you letting me look in your barn, Mr. Leonard. Ah, oh, no problem, Jesse. I was in there a few times today. I didn't see anybody. Then again, I wasn't looking. Abigail, David? Uh, take your time, son. Look around as much as you need. I'm going to finish my dinner and help the missus with the dishes. Just let me know when you leave. Thank you, Mr. Leonard. You kids in here? We've been looking for you all day long. Come on, guys. I'm not mad. No one is. We're all just really worried about you. I don't even know why you guys would run away. Papa Joe and I really liked having you guys at our house. Why don't you just come out and we could go home? Please. Come on, kids. Dear Lord, please help me find Abigail and David. You know, I've, I never really had the desire to have children, but these kids are different. They brought something out in me that I never thought was there. I didn't think I could care for kids the way that I care for them. It, I've only just spent a week with them. Please, please help me find them. Dad and I want them to live with us for good. I've never had a brother or a sister. And now I get to have both. I know it's a little late, but still. We can create memories. We can be a family. You really mean it? David? David, no. Do you really mean it? I mean, 
having a family. Every word. Don't listen to him, David. He's lying. I'm not lying. I promise. Don't make promises you can't keep. Abby, stop. No, I heard you talking about me. About how I ruin everything. I have a I, I never said that. Yes, you did. I overheard you talking with your dad, saying you wish I would just leave and never come back. Abigail, that wasn't about you. Oh, it wasn't? No, it wasn't. Then who was it about? My ex-girlfriend. She's not the nicest person and she just came back into town. Well, then who was the little boy if it wasn't David? Her mother, who's even worse than she is, took in a boy from St. Jerome's. I knew it. I knew you'd give up on us. Give up on? You no way. <laughs> the opposite, actually. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, Dad and I wanted to wait until Christmas to tell you, but I think you already overheard me talking to God. Is it true? Yeah, it's true. So say it. What? I want you to say it. What you're going to do on Christmas? Dad and I want you two to stay with us for as long as you want. Really? Really. <laughs> Abby, what's wrong? Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. And you're not just saying? No, Abigail. I mean it. Thank you. Can we go home now? Yeah. Let's go home. Abigail, you coming? Yeah. Oh, and um, you can call me Abby. Abby it is. All right, guys. You ready to go home?
Jesus. Yeah. 